Plasma is something you're gonna have to maintain and manage. It's not something that will just go away. It's like fat, it comes right back. It's like tartar on your teeth. If you don't brush your teeth, it comes right back. It's similar like that, especially if you're troubled by it or it's genetic because a lot of times I hear things like, oh, it's gonna take care of that and you're gonna be all done and that's it and you're never gonna have to deal with it again, especially with professional services like lasers. I hear that all the time. You need six laser treatments and we're gonna get rid of it for you and it's not gonna come. I'm like, please. First of all, be very careful with lasering your face if you have melasma, especially if you have a darker skin type. Hello beautiful, Cody here, founder of Montalvo Skincare, always here to help you have the most healthy, glowing, and gorgeous skin. And if you're new, welcome. All right, so today's video, I'm gonna talk about melasma and some of the things you can do and some of the things I don't recommend and just give you some information because I am seeing a lot more people with melasma and helping them and a lot of people are just really frustrated because I think what's hap what happens often is when you start to have an issue on your skin like melasma, you know, and melasma is a very different type of pigmentation and a lot of people think they have melasma when they just have pigmentation or discoloration. Generally speaking, discoloration is a little bit of just solar damage of little spots that pop up. Pigmentation usually gets a little bigger and melasma are usually pretty big chunks run underneath the eye, on the forehead, the lip, and even the chin. Um, usually brought on by hormones, hormonal response, often during pregnancy. So, um, you know, so here's the first thing I want to just say is I think what happens is that people that have melasma, they do their research and they go online and they see skin brighteners and lighteners. And so what they do is we all want to save money. So they go and buy, you know, something that's reasonable. And if they're really troubled by melasma, which is pretty deep into the skin, several layers, often in the dermis too, then what happens is they don't get a result because they're buying like licorice, a very small amount of licorice. And licorice just lightens like the top layer really, but it doesn't really inhibit pigment. And if you're struggling with melasma, you have to not only brighten and lighten it, but you have to inhibit the pigment or it just kind of comes right back and rebounds. So you, you, you want to um, probably do a little bit more research and I'll leave all this info below this video, but you, you really want to try to use the right ingredients for melasma and there's not that many, so let's not get complicated about this, okay? And just so you know all these new things that are around, you know, they have newer formulations for stuff, but you know, if it was my last hundred dollars and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try the new formulation of something or I'm gonna try what has been working for 20 years, me, I'm just the person, I'm gonna stick with what is working for the last 20 years and then I'm just gonna kinda see what people are doing with the new formulation because I have been around this game so long, I have heard every new formulation be renamed some new product with the same ingredients and the truth is, you know, we, we want to stick with what we know really kind of works and not get too carried away or fancy because with melasma, it's like there's not many things that will brighten it. So just stick with what works is what I'm essence trying to say. Let me just go off the top of my head. So things that really help brighten melasma in certain percentages are Retin-A, Hydroquinone, Azaleic Acid, Alpha Arbutin, Alpha Hydroxy Acid, and Vitamin C. Those are the main ones. Now, you can use them all interchangeably, but if you're going to just pick one product for now, I would, su I would suggest that you get a hydroquinone product with at least 4% or higher. Higher would have to definitely be compounded from your, um, your dermatologist or your pharmacist, so, um, but at least 4%. 2% probably won't do much if you have really dark spots on your face. I'm just telling you the truth. It's not gonna do much. It's just gonna take care of the top layer and that's not really where the melasma is. It's below the surface of the skin, much deeper than it appears on the top. So I would also recommend a prescription strength of re uh, retinoic acid, Retin-A. And the reason is, is because Retin-A does help with discoloration, it sloughs off the skin, it regenerates new skin, and it starts to bring that discoloration kind of from the bottom layer to the top layer. So when you get that peeling effect, what you're looking at is that newly generated skin below the surface. That's why it starts to get sheen to it and tightness, the pores start to get tighter because that's basically baby skin of the, from the regeneration of new skin coming up to the top layer. 
But because Retin-A is also like a vehicle that penetrates deeper into the skin, if you use Retin-A with hydroquinone and you put on Retin-A like first and then hydroquinone, you're going to get a much better result and that result will start to kick in a lot quicker than if you were just to use hydroquinone by itself. You can also do something like, this is my um, illuminating lift wash, I'm just showing you this as an example. This is a concentrated 10% alpha hydroxy cleanser. If you put that on your skin first and then use the hydroquinone, you'll actually get the hydroquinone to penetrate also in your skin deeper because you're taking off that top layer of skin. Most of the skin that's on the top layer, unless you're using Retin-A, is pretty much dead skin. And when you're using Retin-A, you're regenerating skin cells. You're speeding up the, re the regeneration of new skin cells, which happens every like about 30 days or more. So you're regenerating more quickly. So you, if you take off that top layer and then put in the hydroquinone, you're going to notice that it'll penetrate deeper into those darker layers of discoloration and melasma that you really want to be working on. And with hydroquinone, like I've mentioned, it will inhibit the pigment um, or it will inhibit the tyrosinase enzyme from releasing. So it will kind of block that. Not always, but it inhibits it a little bit. And that's really important because otherwise it just comes right back. Things like licorice, those are just very top layer. They only take care of the top layer of brightening and that brightening, that, that discoloration and pigment just kind of comes right back when you stop using it. But they don't tell you these kinds of things, you know, like you don't read, no one on the company will say, oh, if you stop using this product, your discoloration is going to come right back. Um, I think it, people should say that. I try to say stuff like that in my product descriptions just because I don't want people to be surprised. Like if you stop using something and then it comes right back, you should be told that that's going to happen, I think, in my opinion, but whatever. All right, so the next thing I just want to talk about with melasma in general is, you know, your sugar intake, and that includes alcohol, which includes wine. Um, you know, there's a lot of, I think, um, I think that a lot of people could do a little better job with taking care of their insides a little bit with the right food and also possibly doing a liver cleanse. So you might want to do some research on seeing if you can clean up your liver a little bit and also just seeing if your hormones are overreactive. Maybe you were on a birth control pill that had released a lot of different hormones that caused that triggered response of melasma. So you wanna, if you're on the birth control, if you're on birth control now or a hormone replacement of some kind, you want to just look into that because if you sit here and spend all this money on brightening your skin but you're still using a pill that's going to cause the discoloration or the potential for that discoloration and melasma to come back, then you're kind of defeating the whole purpose. So you do want to make sure that your hormones are crystal clean and clear and they're, right, they're working perfectly because if you have a hormone issue going on that's contributing to the possible issues of your skin, then you're only going to get so much of a result and it's just going to rebound. It's just going to come right back and then you're going to feel extremely frustrated because you've just dropped money and spent a lot of time doing something, but then you're still taking the pill, which could cause more issues. So, and you know, you could also do peels and facials from a professional. I definitely recommend that because um, one that a, a, a professional that's really trained in this area, there are many, you can do a Yelp, you know, research um, because that really will speed up the length of time that you're dealing with this. Now, plasma is something you're going to have to maintain and manage. It's not something that will just go away. It's like fat. It comes right back. It's like tartar on your teeth. If you don't brush your teeth, it comes right back. It's similar like that, especially if you're troubled by it or it's genetic because a lot of times I hear things like, oh, it's going to take care of that and you're going to be all done and that's it and you're never going to have to deal with it again, especially with professional services like lasers. I hear that all the time. You need six laser treatments and we're going to get rid of it for you and it's not going to come. I'm like, please. First of all, be very careful with lasering your face if you have melasma, especially if you have a darker skin type. There are some lasers that are, you sh I don't think you should IPL your face. There's a Pico laser, I believe it's called, um, that's a little bit more gentle. It doesn't offer too much heat, but you really shouldn't try to heat up the skin too much because it can rebound. So these really deep, aggressive chemical peels at 30% TCA, not recommended. I used to do those and we would see people, it would rebound. So it's not really recommended to cause too much heat or traumatization to the skin and then have the potential risk for it coming right back. So lighter is better, less is more. And you would just be consistent. If you're going to do a chemical peel at home, then just do little light ones every several weeks or every couple months so that you start to lift off that discoloration without causing too much trauma. 
Um, the IPL laser used to be used and a kind of a gold standard for, uh, for pigmentation and, and melasma back in the day. And I saw, because I used to fix people, how it would come right back. And I said, oh, I don't think this is the right laser for this, but what am I? I'm not a doctor. I'm just, you know, I wash faces for a living. So, but now the research is coming out. The doctors are kind of admitting it, that it's the wrong type of light. It's the wrong type of heat and frequency, I think, for melasma. It just has, a, you have more of a chance of it coming right back. Less of a chance if your skin is super white, but I just don't think you should risk it because that melasma could come back much darker and much bigger and, and much bigger um, like a year later even. So it's same thing with chemical pill. All right guys, I know I was kind of rambling all over the place. I just had last week like three new clients with all melasma. And you know, they brought in all their skincare and they're using like an Aveda licorice brightener. Another girl was using some like $5 skin brightener with vitamin C in it from like the health food store. Those things are not gonna really work if you're really troubled with pigmentation issues, just so you know. So I'll leave all the information, what I've talked about today below this video. And if you love this info, please subscribe. And I wanna just leave you with this for real. You know, I think it's important to try to find out what is right on your face and what is working and what you do appreciate about your skin because we can get super hyper-focused on discoloration and our skin. And so if you do that and you start this process with a lot of frustration, you're just going to bring that energy of frustration to your new skincare regimen or a new service. And you're not going to really have that sense of freedom and hope. And I really think that that is important for your healing process is to be hopeful and to not feel like, you know, okay I got this discoloration or melasma but I'm gonna fix it or I'm gonna do the best that I can try not to give the melasma too much attention um, acting as if it's this thing that is destroying your life because it's not because nothing can destroy who you truly are because you are an incredible soul so just give yourself a little more love give yourself a little more time and patience and be good to yourself and how you treat yourself when you look in the mirror when you look in the mirror because it does matter all right guys I love you I'll see you soon in a new video bye